All right. Thanks everyone for joining us. Got head coach Clark Lee here. Um, coach, if you don't mind, um, just kind of your thoughts on Friday night's uh, scrimmage and, and what you're looking for out of the Commodores on Friday night. Well, we're, we're a little banged up right now. And so um, I think the first thing I'm looking for is to get out healthy with the team that can finish up next week. And so may not go quite as long as we went the last scrimmage or we kind of designed to go, but um, it's just it's just kind of the next iteration, right? We're we're um, we're now through a full install. We might include some two minute situations, which we worked on in practice today. Um, but we have we have the the base the base level uh, components of our um, red zone tight red zone goal line end short yardage end, and so just looking for um, you know execution in those areas. Some of the you know game day um, you know mechanics. And we're going to be we're going to have coaches on headsets, so we're working the lines of communication too. So, really, really just looking to to um, you know at our, fir our first opportunity to work um, the game day operation. Want to see the team um, you know at a little bit of an advanced level of execution on our base concepts, and then you know look we'll see see them handle some of the newer install, and then maybe maybe some special situation work uh, again for us just to get the exposure to the situations. Sounds great. If you guys got a question, use the raise hand function. Uh, Adam saw you first, so go ahead. Yeah, Clark, uh, with head coaches, it, I, it's kind of a wide range of what influence they have on, on their coordinators and setting the offense and defense. You can dictate or you can suggest that sort of thing. How have you managed or decided of what, how much of a say you're going to have and what the offense and defense looks like? Well, I, ultimately, it's all you know my responsibility, and it, like I trust these guys; they're smart and they're they're capable. And so it, it, you got, we start there. I mean, I I want to see their vision come to fruition, and then I want to help. Um, you know, and I think one one area that it's really important for me is just the team identity, how how this is complementary, and um, you know how we develop that team identity through spring as we get to know ourselves, get to know our personnel our strengths, maybe our weaknesses. And, you know, this has always been about, you know, how we find ways to win games. And that starts with, again, the best mentally and physically conditioned team in the country, but it becomes about how we deploy schemes, you know, how, how we strategically move our team to, um, to, to give us the best chance to be one, one point better than the opponent. And so I, I get to sit back, have a big picture look, and, and I'll meet every day with those guys. And a lot of times I'll make a cut up of practice and just, you know, maybe that's to say, why are we doing this? Or, you know, what was his, you know, were his eyes bad or was the technique wrong? Or, you know, um, in this passing concept, how do we, how do we get a little more horizontal stretch out of it to, to, um, to make the read a little cleaner for the quarterback? I, I've, I've had a blast, um, you know, being able to, to drop in in those ways. And I think in, 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 you know, like not being an offensive guy, I can still contribute to the offensive side of the ball because, you know, my responsibility has been defending modern offense. And so, um, you know, some of the things that maybe um, are, give a defense, defensive perspective to a concept, I can, I can help uh, tighten up some areas to make sure our rhythm and timing is right. We're getting the ball into space and we're giving our offense a chance to move the ball. And in hiring your coordinators, did you try to get people that were as close to in your image as possible so that they fit what you want to do naturally? Or do these guys, are they a little bit different from you so that there's multiple suggestions coming around the room? What's the range of, of those guys compared to your identity? There is alignment and there is a there is an understanding of what my vision for this program is and how this this program is going to find success. There is total alignment in those areas, but I want um, personality differences. I mean, I think that's important. I don't want everyone to communicate. I think the message needs to be the same, but the way it's packaged needs to be different. That keeps it fresh. That keeps players engaged. Um, these guys are smart and talented. Um, that that came through in the interview. I, I wanted to see the ability. You know, not to be so stuck in a system that, you know, we're going to beat our head against the wall just trying to do one thing, but have the creativity and the and the ability to step back and say, hey, you know, how do we, 
How do we find a way to manufacture a play here or play there or, you know, uh, create the matchup we need that I'm talking specifically offensively, but you know, th those were conversations that we had through the interview process. And I took my time on those, um, you know, to make sure that the, the personality is distinct, but the personality needs to fit. This is a team and we're, we're into team success here. And um, that needs to, that needs to permeate this building. Um, and so the alignment in those areas was critical for me. I wanted to, I wanted to know this, that the people in the coordinator roles were going to be able to see the big picture with me and not get caught up in, in their own, you know, seeing life out of their own straw, um, so to speak. But, um, but beyond that, you know, I want them to bring what makes them unique to the table too, because um, that's how you build something special. Thanks. Uh, Michael Bratton, go ahead. Hey coach, Michael Bratton from uh, Saturday Down South. I wanted to ask you about special teams. Now, I know everything that happened at Vanderbilt before you got there is nothing on you, but the special teams has been a real weakness of Vanderbilt in recent seasons. So, you know, I'm just curious to know, uh, you know, you spend an assistant, you use an assistant as a coordinator. That's not something all things coaches do, but we're starting to see more and more of that. So just kind of curious to get your thoughts on the emphasis of special teams in your program and, and how confident you are that uh, you can turn that into a strength because the way I see it, I don't know if you feel the same, but if Vanderbilt's going to win some games next year, they're probably going to be some tight games and going to need that side of the ball to be a strength instead of a weakness. Certainly, you know, one of my first hires was Justin Lustig. Um, you know, that was that was intentional. I mean, I, I, I knew um, out of the gate that I wanted to try to secure the best special teams coordinator I could. And, I, and to me, that that's two, you know, there were two layers to that. Well, I guess three. One is, again, the, the personality fit within in the vision fit. You know, I wanted someone that was aligned with, you know, how we, we were going to build this program. Um, but, you know, that that role needs personality to it. I mean, that role needs to energize your team. It needs to um, build a culture within a culture. And so I, I was very interested in the style of play as I was evaluating um, for that for that position hire, um, you know, um, I, I wanted to find someone whose units played really, really hard. And then the other, the, the other side of it was just the schematic or the ability to generate plays or generate field position. You know, you wanted, you wanted to see, um, I didn't want this just to be like, you know, let me go find a, a young energetic, you know, um, coach that can build spirit in the unit. Like I wanted to have someone that had a demonstrated track record of, successful special teams, you know, whether that's, you know, uh, generating blocks, explosive returns, um, or just applying pressure, snap in, snap out in teams. Um, and certainly, you know, someone who has awareness of the importance of field position. So, um, yeah, I, I, Justin Lustig has been um, phenomenal in his role. And I'm so excited for him to continue to build that culture within the culture. He, he is the assistant head coach, but he he's the head coach of the special teams units and he does a, a tremendous job of building that identity. Um, you know, I, I don't even even going beyond what you said, I, I think, you know, for Vanderbilt, the best version of Vanderbilt football is going to be a team that understands the complementary pieces to winning. Right. Like our offense needs to complement our defense. Our defense needs to complement our offense and our special teams has to create for us. Um, and I think that'll be true uh, here from day one to the finish point. And so um, having someone really that solidified that aspect of the game that could build an advantage through special teams um, and, and, and really just generate a care factor within that area that uh, can move this program forward. Because it's just, it's just an area of the, of the game where we can we can create an advantage for ourselves. And, um, you know, we intend to do that. So I appreciate the question. It's a, it's a good question and um, certainly an area of focus for us. And in the spring, a lot of it is fundamental technical work. You know, I mean, it's, we're not, we're not doing a lot of scouted live reps, but we're certainly getting some of that. And, um, and so it's been, it's been a good spring so far. Thanks coach. Robbie. 
Uh, hey, Clark, it, it seems like there's, you know, a, a few positions on the field where freshmen, you know, if they play well and earn it, will have maybe an opening to get a fair amount of snaps. So how, um, you know, how can seeing them, those guys in a scrimmage situation, uh, as opposed to just practice, really help you guys evaluate, uh, you know, like a true freshman who hasn't played in an actual, you know, live college football game yet? You know, um, well, it's just, I mean, Robbie, it's so early, you know, and so, I mean, obviously I'm excited to watch those guys perform. And I, and I think as a, you know, as young competitors, there is an element probably where, you know, you have this game mode mindset, but I think as a program, we're really, we're not subscribing to that. Like we, we believe that the game day is culmination of the work in the week. And so, what we say here is that every every rep we take in practice should be treated as a game rep. And a lot of that's come from a response uh, to practice habits that reveal themselves early, you know, um, is a one on one drill, just an opportunity to to fill, you know, five minutes in uh, in a practice schedule, or are we attacking the ball in the air like it is the most important possession in a game? Well, we need to be attacking the ball in the game in the air like it's the most important possession in the game and uh, once we develop that mindset within our practice i think these competition battles won't wait for scrimmages you know they'll be they'll be played out every single day and that that's that point is when the program will be at a competitive level you know we still have to be developmental and we have to develop skills but as a competitive level that'll be the moment where we um, are operating in, in a manner that we want to operate um, Right now, you know, scrimmage is a chance to play some live football. It's the lights will go on tomorrow night, right? That's kind of a cool thing too. And um, I'll, I'll be excited to see who steps up and who handles the adversity well. The adversity will come, and who who you know breaks the play when the offense needs a play, play to break. Who attacks the ball in defense and gets it turned over? Um, but hopefully, moving forward, those things won't be uh, relegated to scrimmages. That'll be stuff that we see happening day in day out. Michael, did you have another? Yeah, real quick, less serious question for me, but uh, are you at all regretting the, not putting the jerseys or the numbers on the jerseys? Because I'm sitting here looking at the photos you're putting out, wondering how in the hell you guys are evaluating uh, practice, <laughs> at least the film, you know? Yeah, well, you get to you get to know all the all the features of your players: the gait, <laughs> the stance, the the body type. Um, no, we, we, you know, look, it's, it's, um, that, that's been an important part for us and there are inconveniences. I'm not, I'm not going to lie, but I think, um, the ability here to, to stay patient with that so that we continue to double down and look, it's not, we're not going to all of a sudden put jerseys on them and, and then our, our, our journey's done. You know, the, the, the things that we're trying to build into this program right now are going to be things that don't just last, but they actually um, you know, we continue to move the needle forward. And so, um, yes, there are inconveniences to it, um, but certainly an important thing that we're doing and we're going to keep doing it until we feel like we start to see guys, um, you know, re really take hold of the standards that we're, that we're preaching. Thanks. Robbie. Uh, yeah, just a quick one, Clark. Um, did you guys add in the extra snap counts uh, for the offensive line by now? Do, I assume they don't just have one like in the last uh, scrimmage. There are multiple counts now. So um, we're going to see, hopefully we'll get some defense drawn off sides tomorrow night. Now, if we don't, then good on the defense, right? Now, the next thing will be we have to change the words we use to identify the cadence because that's just what happens when you get to know each other too well. But um, no, we have we have some of those mechanics in, and that'll be the, some of the things that we practice. Coach, before I let you go, I had one uh, for Javon Hay. Uh, how important was it uh, for you to keep him on staff and have him around a guy who's, who's lived it just like you have? So powerful. You know, we have five people in this building that, you know, were Vanderbilt student athletes that surround these players every day between me, Javon, Norval, Earl Bennett, and then obviously Candace Lee. And, um, you know, I, I, when you start looking at that from a recruiting standpoint or just a player development standpoint, you have people around these guys every day that are examples of how to navigate, 
we walked these hallways, you know, we navigated this campus to a level of success that allowed us to reach for achievement in our own lives. And so, um, so I think that's a great feature of this program, but, but Javon specifically, you know, I always say this, J Javon, J he still is, man, Javon is my captain. And Javon Hay was one of the most impactful leaders as a young person that I was ever around. He was relatable, he was tough. There was player to player accountability. He loves Vanderbilt football. I mean, he he lives it and loves it every day. And um, and to have him alongside me to to help bridge the gap that's created at times when you're the head coach and you know you don't have the depth of relationship everywhere that you want to have. I got a guy who's building those relationships and understands absolutely what we want to accomplish here together. And um, it's such a powerful thing to have. And Javon also is a dynamic recruiter too. And um, he's a dynamic recruiter because he's got personality and energy and he believes in the product he's selling. So um, what, what, a, what a great person to have with me. And like I said, it, it's great to have my captain on, on staff. You know, it's a, it's a big thing for me. All right, on that, we'll let you go. Go enjoy this beautiful day. Appreciate it. All right. Th hey, thanks again, everybody, for your interest.